What the hell are these options right now? Leave the park, kick the puppy, kill the dog, eat the puppy. What is wrong with this game? Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. But in the middle of your work, it starts to rain. Typical, but maybe this is just a sign that you should have stayed home today. Yeah. You can always try again tomorrow, right? You turn to head home when- Oh, that's such a cute meow. Huh? What was that? There are only a few people around on the streets. Makes sense due to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiously guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground, dampened by the rain, makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box, is a cat. Huh? Guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark seas of its fur. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. Don't look at me like that, okay? You're gonna make me do something that I don't want to do, okay? So cute. It definitely knows it. You never has of uh, you never had much of an opinion one way or another about cats before, but they're all like this one. It's a shock they haven't already found a way to rule the world. Plot twist. They already do. You don't think you'll mind bowing down to a feline overload. You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves a cat in a carbo box these days anyway? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box eventually? No, that's the box. Is its home. It's its best friend. No one left the cat in that box. The cat found the box. And the box found the cat. Their relationship is part of nature, okay? It's part of it's part of their cat cycle, okay? The cat doesn't answer you, obviously. It always uh, doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you with them big, glowing eyes. As if waiting for you to make the next move. Oh, great. Great, my first save is here. I will... I won't. With a sigh, you decide to take a step back. As cute as the cat is, you really can't afford to be taking in a pet on a whim. Rent's coming up soon, and your job doesn't exactly leave you rolling in dough. You give the cat a sad nod. Sorry, good luck out there, okay? You turn around and leave the cat in the alley behind. Rain's picking up with a small cry from the cat. Time to head home. Ending? Nah, ya fool! So I guess I can just skip to the first- Okay. Okay, fine, fine, I'll take you home, I guess. How bad could this possibly be? Well, bring the cardboard box, okay? I know it'd be soaking, but I know you are- you're at home in that box, so I'll bring it with me. You reach into the box and pick the cat up. No, you gotta bring the box with you. Come on. Hold it out in front of you. Why not? <coughs> you know, you're all alone. And well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so you're bringing the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering just then, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a little while. I don't like the purr. I honestly don't like the purr. You think a little while will probably be more like a day. You'll be responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow, but for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? It agrees, it agrees, it totally agrees. You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food, then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, one you are living alone in. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after all so long, even if it's just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores the new environment. Leaving the feline to make its own devices, you set about making both of you some dinner. You gonna have some cat food too? Uh, you know, I'm not against it. Try new things, right? Try new things! You take out the can of cat food and open it with the tab on the top. You put some cat food on a saucer and click your tongue to call the cat over to you. I don't know how to understand to come over to you when you click your tongue, but okay. 
You train this cat quick. It perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food and completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. It's just a cat, after all. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs. Rubs it? Rubs what? I'm concerned. I'm concerned what it's rubbing against me right now. You smile. That's enough of you. You smile. That's enough of it. It thanks for you. It follows you into the kitchen as you start on your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted. Bread toasted, mayo, and mustard spread. Turkey and cheese and lettuce perfectly placed. Tomato sliced. Ugh! You wince as you cut your finger on the knife while slicing a tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder and sigh, tossing the knife onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat pops up onto the counter. It sniffs at the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm alright. It was just an... You watch as the cat starts to... Lick the knife! Licky, lighty, but enthusiastic at the blood on the knife. At your blood. It's a predator. It's an apex predator. It's at the top of the food chain. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? Sure, you're not a cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. Right? It disagrees entirely. Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in a need while the, it's still rain outside. Not after all your efforts. You were going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyway. What's one night of awkwardness? It's gonna eat you in your sleep, isn't it? It's just a cat. Sure it is. You keep telling yourself that. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes down here from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to look at the wound. While you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning up the kitchen, while trying to watch TV, you gently push it away every time, but you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it's just got a taste for blood and thinks you're food now? You're not sure what you'll do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Meow. Meow. Meow! Ugh, oh, come on, enough already. You shove it away a little more forcefully this time, out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner and into the wall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Why you gotta say that? Why you gotta foreshadow something like that, bro? Why? Maybe a vet will have an idea on how to calm it down. You can only hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. You, that, no, that's still an option. After finding the number of the local vet, you're going to waste your hard-earned money on a cat you were going to just return to the shelter? That's a bad idea, bro. They got the resources for that for damn sure. You pick up your line and... Did the cat just flip off the lights? The lights just went out. Great, just great. Ray must have knocked out the power. You click your cell phone only to find that it's out of batteries. You must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outing had been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. You grab a flashlight and turn it on. Nothing's there. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. Oh my... Oh... Oh no, what does it say? The cat sits on top of your digital clock staring at you. Thinking now you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up and going completely haywire. The cat stares at you. It's completely still. You think it was a statue if you didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking. It's not even breathing, but it's eyes. This... Is it normal? You're afraid. You want to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out after all. But as soon as that the thought enters your mind, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes. Its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it. Its pupils are large. Round. Inky. What? The flashlight flickers. Oh, no, 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 no. And the cat is gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. 
the silent adventures with the rapid pumping of blood in your heart. It is overridden as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of the static around you. How is the clock working with no power? You don't know why such a question matters at the moment, but you feel as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that is happening. That order will be restored, but no answer comes to mind. You back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself closed tightly and abruptly in response, like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. But you can't stay still forever, right? No, no, the cat just did English and Spanish against you. Don't move, whatever is watching you. You can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how you know this, but you can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered. Oh, no, no, no. Right into your ear. Right into your soul. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens within you, making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement of action. But you're still weak from the fear grips on your mind. Your legs tangle together under you in your haste and you fall to the ground. Oh, oh. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. I thought it would go for the hand first. It's been licking there the whole time. At first, you think you're broken your ankle. But something warm and wet tickles down the length of your foot, pulling underneath. You hear the sound of metal scraping on the tile after skidding across the floor as if it had been kicked. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in a strange light coming in from outside. The light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what in regard to your instantly open door screech to a halt. As your brain finally identifies the metallic office you've been staring at. It's your kitchen knife. And still tainted red from your earlier blunder? Well, that's not right. Wasn't it completely licked off? Wasn't it completely licked clean by the... You gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stomped on instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. Oh, no, 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 I, I'm good. I'm good, Mr. Cat. When you spy something in the darkness just beyond the cat and the knife, it spies right back at you. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light from your doorway. It pads slowly over to the knife as it skipping into light and bends down to slap at the blood dripping from the blade. Your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. The chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of your silky breast disoriented against the static now piercing your skull. The dryness of your tongue spreading to your throat. The incomprehensible sight of the stray you taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife once again completely clean. The scent of blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood? No, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. You did this. The golden eyes slide up to you as if it in response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves his shoulders twitching as if just considering the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet. And out the door. You run. Or rather limp. Down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red. But there's a strained light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you. Everything. Except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bodily prints your injured foot leaves in your wake. With every impact, it makes with the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Now when the road ahead of you is darkened, but a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running because... If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then what's in the world is in behind you? Oh my goodness, what is behind you? I gotta look behind me to be completely honest. I, I don't think I... Um, I don't think this cat's trying to save me. Whatever's behind me is bigger than the cat, so I should probably look behind me. I should be a bigger cat. Huh? Interesting. How oh, very, very interesting. And in zero, it begins. What begins? Nothing happened. I didn't see nothing. Ooh. 
What do you mean there's one out of four endings? 40 endings, sorry. Okay, everyone, I come to a realization. It said continue, and now you're walking. Right, of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. And you're actually glad that you did. The weather is absolutely perfect today. That's a good sign, right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. Meow. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Curiously guiding your step, you'll, you follow the sound to the entrance of a lonely alleyway. This is different. Different. The sunlight only just uh, manages to reach down in between the tall buildings on either side. You totally enter the alley, alley and walk forward. The loose gravel and scattered debris on the ground softens your footsteps. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the warm, almost internal light of the alleyway. At the end of the alley, in a cardboard box, is a cat. Huh. Guess that should have been obvious. Oh, hi. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark seas of its black fur. I'm not sure what I should do here, to be completely honest. <laughs> I think life has given me another shot at not taking this cat home, and I'm not. Sadly, as cute as the cat is, you never take this thing home with you. Thing. Thing. It's not a cat. You just can't take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. Meow? Yeah? You are. With rent and abuse to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive too. There's no way you could take care for a cat long term, right? You could barely afford this little outing on your off day. Meow. Yeah. What to do? Why do I have so many options for a cat? What's the mystery mean? You are not ready. What am I not ready for? What am I not ready for for the question mark? You know? Screw this. I'm leaving you. You don't think it's a good idea to get the cat's hopes up of having someone look after it if you're not willing to commit. What if it gets attacked and somehow tracks you down back to your home? Sorry. See you around, I guess. What was that? You never get, you never get away from it then. Why won't I ever get away from it then? You make it halfway out the alleyway when the cat mouths almost pitifully at you. Ignore. Ignore. I- I have to ignore it. I'm absolutely gonna ignore you. I have to go. No hope. You need to nip this in the bud and get on with your day. It's what's best for both of you. You leave the alley and continue on your way. What was I doing? In all the excitement of dealing with your furry dilemma, you've forgotten that you still haven't decided on what you were going to do for your off day. I think I'll go to the dog park. You decide to take a stroll in a park or something. The only one within walking distance is the nearby dog park. You think it'd make you feel better. First, you get to see a cute cat today. Now you get to see cute dogs too. Several of them, in fact. The park is bustling with owners and their canine companions. Playing frisbee, fetch, running, jumping, even nipping. Whatever. Like you want anything to do with these monkey mutts. What the? Is this like the voice of the cat in my mind? Huh? What's wrong? You didn't think that? You decided to move on. The dogs are also adorable. You want to pet every single one of them you come across. But you know, not all owners are cool with strangers just walking up and manhandling their dogs or pets. Not all dogs appreciate it either. So you stroll around the path, trying to excuse to a welcoming run aura that will beckon one of these cute doggies to you. You don't have to wait very long. Fork. Oh, such a cutie. You stop at the smallest, cutest puppy you've ever seen. Scampers up to you, blocking your path. Kick? What the hell are these options right now? Leave the park, kick the puppy, kill the dog, eat the puppy, pick up the puppy. What is wrong with this game? What is wrong with this game? I think all the, the only right answer here is, oh no, is, is to is to leave. But I'm also like, I, I'm gonna, you know, it's going. This is going on page two. And 
And, you know, I'm just like, two of these are the same thing. Eating the puppy is killing the puppy. It's just an extra step. And killing the puppy is just without feeding yourself. So it's kind of just pointless. You're just leaving a dead body to waste. And kicking the puppy is just going to hurt the puppy. It's like literally, oh my goodness, no. <laughs> Can't do this to me, man. We're going to eat this damn puppy. That's disgusting. I think I'm going to be sick. There's no way I would ever do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we go down from eating the puppy to kill the puppy. No. That's horrible. There's no way I would ever do that. The puppy. Kick, kick the puppy. What? It's just a puppy. There's no way I would ever do that. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm going to pick up that puppy. You pick up the puppy and drop it. No, hold on. Hold on. It gave me a timer in the top left. You just barely managed to re rein in the reflex to throw the puppy at oh, as far away from you. With shaking hands, you quickly place the puppy on the grass and take several jerky steps back. The owner seems confused for by your reaction to their puppy, but you just... Wave at them in a daze before hastily stumbling away. What kind of PTSD though I have for a dog? You're not feeling so great about being at the park at the moment. Maybe you should leave. I need this. I need this run to be over. <laughs> I need it to be over now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I gotta leave. Oh, what? Why are you staring at me? Good. I think I'll go watch a movie. Yeah, I. I think I'll go watch a movie. It's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself to a movie theater. But there's a showing of one such film at the old theater. The movie was a little too niche to be picked up by the new cinema. That's open right across the street. That's okay though, you're not exactly a fan of crowds. And nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a nosy audience. Go to the new cinema, go to the old, go, go to the new cinema. You don't know why, but you don't really feel great about the idea of being alone right now. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming, you join the long line outside the cinema. By the time you reach the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket from the tired looking teenager manning the booth. The decor is cheek and sleek, and inside is bustling with people. It's not what you're usually into. But it's kind of nice not being alone, even if you feel a little lonely watching family and groups of parents laughing among themselves. You get some popcorn, but the lines at the concession stands are long and the prices are criminal anyway. You go through the halls and follow the signs to the theater that is designated on your ticket before heading inside. You sigh at the sight of the amazingly crowded theater. You head toward a seat only to be told by the person next to it that it's being safe for someone. This happens a few more times before you finally manage to get yourself settled into a seat annoyingly off-centered to the screen. But the screen is at least visible, if not a little too close, so you grit your teeth and bear it. The lights fade out, but the chatter doesn't. The rest of the audience seems content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie actually begins. But it doesn't get even slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. You sigh out loud, not thinking anyone would hear you anyway. This is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. Suddenly, the screen changes, showing the face of a black cat. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then, the cat on the screen meows. Yeah, yeah. The sound is a strange. And not at all like any catch at sound. Haunting, almost melodic, and layered as if made of multiple voices of different creatures. Creatures that would probably never say. Sounds like a dog's barking, bro. With a cat meow? You sit in confused and wonder why you haven't already gotten up and left to complain to the cinema staff. But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonant at first, but among the crowd, people start to chant along with the cat on the screen. 
Nah, bruh. You're feeling extremely drawn to the screen yourself, but the compulsive stare of blinking like the other isn't that strong for now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. No. There. Outright staring holes into you, even as they continue chanting. They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blunted disapproval. Their scrum deepens as time goes on, as if they're going, getting impatient. Try to leave. I think, I think it's a good idea. You know, this would be the movie theater. The pastry is the movie theater. We are going to try to leave. We're not going to try to blend into a cult meeting right now. No, 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 no. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. Gathering your courage. Or perhaps putting your fears to use. You stand up. Fully intending to leave the theater. When everything comes to an abrupt stop, all the chanting stops, even the cats chanting on the screen, you tense and risk a glance around the theater. They're all staring at you. Every single one of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You haul, you swallow, throat suddenly dry, even through a nervous sweat completely soaked through your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the solution. Situation. Your legs are... Shaking under the audience, unnaturally intense scrutiny. But you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisles. You feel their collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All their heads have turned uncoverly to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making them... Making clear their blank scrawls. They seem even more upset than they had been minutes ago. Identical frowns, lines dragging between their brows. You keep going, the heavy atmosphere becoming more and more oppressive with every step. You're so intense with anticipation that you finally expect someone to grab at you from behind. But no one does. You don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater, holding your breath, as the door closed behind you. You briskly walk through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and the theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling to the floor as you gulp in huge gas of air. You expect to feel relief as your breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it, as well as its source. You look up, and your stomach stinks. What? What's up? What's up? What? What? What did? Oh, oh, oh! All the people in the lobby area of the movie theater, everyone in line at the concession stand, all of them are staring at you, and they—they they look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoid the eye contact, leave the cinema. You know the glazes of everyone in the ticket booths and the lines leading to them. You make your way home. Whenever you dare to look up at the someone on the way, you flinch at the blended anger, fury, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sound of a cat's meowing behind you, or maybe a kitten's. Doesn't matter, you just want to go home. You reach your front door and fumble with the keys, cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Finally, you get inside your apartment and lock all the locks on the door and slide down with your back against it till you're sitting on the floor. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. Now home, your heart recalms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you feeling strangely empty. You pass the kitchen, head to your room, and slip under the covers of your bed trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fitful stream, sleep, sure to be a full of nightmares of glaring eyes, you try to ignore the ever-increasing sounds of cats meowing and howling in the distance outside your apartment. Ending 17. Black Sheep. Alright everyone, that is gonna have to be it for Do Not Take This Cat Home. 
I do hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below. But without any further ado, be well, farewell, but most importantly, bye. For now, though.